Uh, I want to talk about um, patents. So the patent professor, his name is John Risby. Uh, he's an adjunct professor of patent law at Nova Southeastern Law School in Florida. The author of, uh, of two books. Why don't you plug that in for me? Um, the question now is, can artificial intelligence actually patent something? And John Risby is on the line right now. John, good morning. Hey, good morning. Always a pleasure to be here. Well, what a, I mean, is it possible that AI could be given credit for an invention of some sort? So the, the, the central issue is when does this, uh, when does a computer program or a robot, uh, the, the contribution becomes so much so that a human being can no longer be listed as an author or inventor. Mm. And that's problematic because under the Constitution, patents and trademarks and intellectual property are for humans. And uh, those that proponents of, of AI inventions and, and art are claiming that AI is just a tool uh, no different than a camera for a photographer or, or a, a chisel for uh, a okay. sculptor. <clears throat> Uh, but it's an incredible. The, the difference is it's an incredible tool, and yeah. the human contribution keeps getting less and less. You know, it's funny that uh, my my daughter over the weekend um, on Friday took the uh, took the MCATs um, exam, which is like uh, I don't know. She's in there for taking a test for like eight hours or something, maybe longer than that. And what they had to go through. To get in to do the exam was unbelievable, and it just shows you wh wh how we fear technology right now. The, they had to pat, they, she had to pat herself down. They, 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 they go, you're going through, I don't know, it was a metal detector when you come in, but you're going through all of this stuff. They're looking through your hair. They're looking, and they want to see in your, if, they, if you're sneaking a cell phone in or some sort of maybe, quote, artificial intelligence or or whatever to help you uh, do well on that test. It just shows you how nervous we are about kids, students cheating on exams like this. Oh, a hundred percent. It's um, in fact, as a as a law school professor, it's it, you know, it's it, I'm leaning towards in class examinations with uh, a pen or pencil and a piece of paper because once it's something that they get to submit and it's done at home oh yeah uh, there's, there's no way to tell how much ai has been used in that final product and you know you take the ai and then you you make it your own that seems to be the uh the big thing that uh that is being done today so but the reality would be this is a tool so if you're in don't you feel like this is going to open the door for us to be able to patent things that are just amazingly advanced, far more advanced than we would have been able to do without AI. Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. So it's, I mean, there's no question that the, the, the pace of innovation is going to skyrocket. The, the real question is, uh, is uh, at which point is the human contribution too small for us to mm. provide any exclusive rights to the person that, that, that had the idea. And that's, that's ultimately where, uh, the, the law is going to have to go now. The Biden administration or, or President Biden issued an executive order asking the patent office for clarity on inventorship. And unfortunately, the clarity is, has not been that, that clear. I mean, they, they said that the human contribution needs to be significant, but there's no definition of how much mm. of a contribution is significant enough. You know, here's the other part of this. You can, you can try to hide it, right? We can we can utilize AI and then basically not tell anyone. But here's the problem: AI will always know. Can you rely on AI to not reveal that you basically are cheating? Uh, I I I don't think you can. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, there's the the the, the more sophisticated these tools become, the more sophisticated that detectors are going to become. Right, I mean, there's right. already software that you can put written materials into that will help determine if it's uh, a human written piece or AI generated. Uh, and, and, you know, there's, it's just, it's a, it's a race. Like as the, the more sophisticated the cheaters become in a sense, yep. uh, going back to your school example, the better 
the teachers are going to have to get at catching the cheating. Mm-hmm. It's no longer enough just to, to have people open their hands to make sure they don't have yeah, notes yeah. written in the palm of their hands anymore. It's gotten way more sophisticated than that. Yeah, really, really. And I, I mean, the way my daughter described what she went through over the weekend was just, uh, I'm, I've never seen so much caution uh, when it comes to taking a test. But uh, I, I just feel like when you're, you know, if, 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 and I wonder how far away we are from this, where maybe you're charged with plagiarism, you've been kicked out of a school, or maybe you've been fired from a job, and it ends up in the court system. At what point can the government say, we're going to get, we, we can go in and get that information to prove that you used AI? Um, I would imagine we're not far from that, if maybe we're already there. Yeah, so uh, the information's out there. It's just it's going to be a matter of at which point is it uh, a violation of, of your privacy for, yeah, for that yeah. to take place. All right, interesting stuff. Uh, John Risby, thank you so much. We appreciate your time this morning. Okay. Always a pleasure. Thank uh, you. Have a great day.